So we are in chapter 3 of J.D. Jackson and the title of the chapter is Boundary Waiting Problems and these are actually two. One we have solved in chapter and this is chapter 3. So, in electrostatics, we are having boundary waving problems the next session. And what we will do, we will solve the Laplace equation and spherical polar coordinates. In spherical polar coordinates, we will solve the Laplace equation. The spherical polar coordinates are r, theta, and phi. You know from Gauss's law, we are having the divergence of electric field is equal to rho over epsilon naught. And we know that electric field is the negative gradient of potential. So by putting this thing in it, we are having that the del square of V, del square of V is equal minus rho over epsilon naught. We call this equation the Poisson's equation and when we are, this is Poisson's equation and when we will be in a region where there is no charge density then we will say that that is where we are from now on I will write this is phi. So you can phi and v are the electric potential. So this will become that is where phi will be equal to zero. And this equation I call the Laplace equation. We have solved the Laplace equation in Cartesian coordinates. You remember that del square in Cartesian coordinates is curly square by curly x square plus curly square by curly y square plus curly square by curly z square. Now, I want to convert this Laplacian from the Cartesian to spherical polar coordinates. So what I will do, I will write, uh, I will use the chain rule of the derivatives. And then curly by curly x will be written as curly r by curly x and curly x by curly r. This way the chain rule I will use and I will derive the del square in spherical polar coordinates is equal to 1 over r square and curly square by curly r square, r square and this is r and okay, this will be curly r. I will write like this. This is actually r curly r, but I can uh, reconvert this thing in this form as well. So another is 1 over plus 1 over r square sine of theta and curly by curly theta sine of theta and curly by curly theta. So this is one. Similarly this one you can write curly by curly r and this is r and curly by curly r. You can write like this as well. And plus 1 over r square sine square theta and curly square by curly phi squared. 
Now when I will write 5 with this one, so 5 will come with this one, with this one, and with this one. So let me write 5 with it. So it will be equal to 5 here and 5 here and 5 here. Okay. Now we will have to differentiate between this point and this point. So this point which is the potential is actually capital phi. So I will write it as capital phi. And this one is a variable phi which we call the small phi. So I've changed this one to capital phi here or here as well. And I will differentiate between the variable and the potential. Now I know that this phi is actually a function of r theta and phi. So there are three variables on which this potential is dependent. So I will write, I will suppose this one that let's say this is equal to u of r divided by r and then p of theta and divide this is q of phi. Now actually what is what is u? u is potential. p is potential and q is potential. So u, p and q they are potential. Actually not u exactly but u by r is potential because then it will be dimensionally wrong. Here is potential. We will use the separation of variable techniques. So this one is potential, p is potential and q is potential. But these potentials are such that this potential is depending on r only, this potential is depending on theta only and this potential is depending on phi only. So we will use the separation of variable techniques. Uh, the separation of variable technique will be able to solve means to separate out the dependence of this phi into its individual variables. I can write that r time capital phi is equal to u, p and q. Now I will not write that u is a function of r, p is a function of theta and q is a function of phi. So putting big this into this equation. So I will write the del square phi capital phi is equal to 1 over r squared and for this one, for this one I will, means I want to skip some steps but let's see, 1 over r squared curly by curly r and then r and curly by curly r and I will write for phi the value u, u r, so it will be u p q will come here. And with this u, you are having that r as well. And then I will write plus 1 over r squared sine of theta and curly by curly theta sine of theta and curly by curly theta and I can write u p q and here will be r with this and plus this will be the last term in this one 1 over r square sine square of theta and 30 square by 35 square and u over r and p q and this thing is equal to 0 because del square phi is equal to 0 
Now you know the way how the separation of variable works. You write the variables, then you divide by those variables. And what it helps means here if you see that u is a function of r, but p and q are not a function of r, so they will come out pq. And when you will divide by u pq, then pq will cancel and one more u will come here. Clear? Similarly here, p is a function of theta, u and q will come out. When you will divide by u pq, then you will get this thing is only 1 over p and here will be curly p by curly r and so on. So I say that substitute, substituting the value of i which we substituted and this will be multiplied, multiplying with, multiplying with r square sine of square theta divide by u p q. So we are doing two things here. We will multiply this whole relation by r square sine square theta and is the typical separation of variable technique we will divide by u p q and this will reduce your equation to r square sine square of theta 1 over u and d square u divide by d r square plus sine of theta by p and d by d theta and sine of theta d p by d theta plus 1 over q and d square q by d phi square is equal to 0. Your equation will be reduced into this form. You see here, r square sine square theta is multiplied with this first. Then r square sine theta, theta is coming in here. And you are dividing by u p q. So, the u will come here and the pq will cancel when this will come out. So, you are having one over u. Then, I am changing, I am changing the partial derivative into full derivative because now my u is only a function of r. So, the partial derivative will be converted into full derivative. Here it is dp by d theta because p is a function of theta only and not of r and phi and q is a function of phi. So you will reduce your equation to this form. Now this is equal to 0. If you look here to your equation then this first term is a function of r and theta. This one is a function of theta only and this one is a function of phi only. So we have separated the equation into its individual variables except this term where r and theta are yet combined. So we will have to solve this situation later on. First we are taking this one. If you look here then in this equation, you are having 1 over q, q is a function of phi, and d square q potential by phi square. This one is completely independent. This has nothing to do with this term and this term. This one is not completely independent. Why? Because here, although it is only theta dependent, but this theta is combined here as well. So it is in relation with this one somehow. This one is completely independent. So we will first attain the first term. Now you know this is a function, this is a function and this is a function. When the additions of function is equal to zero, 
then you cannot write that one function is equal to the negative of the other function. This is wrong. What do you do now, really? You say that if three functions are added, then if this one is equal to some constant, the other two will be equal to the minus of that constant. So I suppose that f this one, 1 over q and d squared q by d phi squared. Let's say this thing is equal to minus m squared, where m is a constant, right? Where where <coughs> m is a constant. Now why I am taking m square? Because if I take m and you solve the second order differential equation, then iota will come in there. Means with this one, square root will come in and it will cause a problem. So what I do? I take it as m squared. And what will be this one? r square while the rest of the term which is r square sine square theta and 1 over u d square u over d r square plus sine theta by p e, d of d theta sine of theta and dp by d theta, then this will be equal to plus m square. So m square minus m square will give you zero. zero.